Greetings teachers and students, and welcome to Living Literature. This is a forum for discussing and writing about great poetry. In our analyses, we use what we call the paragraph method, one that works very quickly and effectively. In this lesson, we will look at how to structure a paragraph and at how to plan. Let's begin by looking at how to structure a paragraph. Good writers organize their writing and their ideas in building blocks of information. These building blocks are called paragraphs. Without knowing how to write a well-structured paragraph, you will not be able to write well-structured longer texts. So let's get our paragraphs perfect so that, by extension, we can write anything. Moving from the general to the specific, the main idea of a paragraph is often expressed in general terms, and then followed by sentences which give specific details about the main idea. These support sentences often give particular examples which illustrate the main idea. Have a look at this diagram that illustrates the movement from the most general, vehicles, to the most specific, my red 2019 Toyota Corolla called Henry. Try this exercise. Order the following items from the most general to the most specific. Pansies, plants, annual flowers, flowers, the African pansy. Compare your answers to these. Plants, flowers, annual flowers, pansies, and the most specific, the African pansy. Here are another two exercises for you. Again, order the following from the most general to the most specific and compare your answers with the ones that follow. Pause the video to compare your answers with these. The following paragraph is an illustration of how a paragraph moves from the general to the specific. We have illustrated this with the use of colour. Birds of prey often circle in the sky as they search for their victims. Many bird watchers have described their delight in seeing an eagle soaring before it swoops down on a rabbit. Hawks have also been seen hovering high above the ground in search of mice and rodents. Therefore, it is not an uncommon sight to see birds of prey as they search in the sky for food. Moving from the abstract to the concrete. Today we will look at the fact that the topic sentence will quite often be expressed in abstract terms. In other words, it will speak of things which cannot be touched, tasted or seen. Things like love and sadness and economics and socialism and health. These are ideas and feelings. If the topic sentence is expressed in abstract terms, it is important to make sure that the supporting details are as concrete as possible. This helps the reader to see and understand your meaning clearly. Below is a list of abstract and concrete terms. Choose a few 
and underline the abstract and circle the concrete terms and compare your answers with the ones that follow. Pause the video to compare your answers with the ones below. There are usually a number of concrete things which you associate in your mind with any abstraction. For instance, the abstraction hope might make you think of a dry winter tree producing buds in spring, peace might make you think of a dove, or a quiet garden, or two one-time enemies shaking hands, speed might make you think of a racing car, or a concord, or a cheetah. For the following exercise, choose at least three terms, and for each of the abstractions, write down one concrete association. For example, peace could be a dove. Here are a few suggested answers from moving from the abstract to the concrete. Let's work the other way around. In a similar way, you often associate a certain abstraction with particular concrete things. For instance, when you see snow, you may think of purity or coldness. When you see an open fire, you may think of coziness or homeliness. When you see books, you may think of knowledge. When you see a racehorse, you may think of speed or beauty. For this exercise, choose at least three of the terms below and write down an abstraction you associate with it. For instance, snow could be associated with the abstract idea of purity. Pause the video to have a look at some of our suggested answers. Let's now look at coherence and cohesion. In a good piece of writing, the ideas are connected to one another in two ways. Firstly, the ideas themselves are closely related to one another. The main idea of the paragraph is expressed in its first sentence, while the other sentences in the paragraph support and develop this main idea. Secondly, there are words in the paragraph which connect one idea with the next. For instance, there are connectors like and and because. Other words like pronouns, synonyms and antonyms can also act as language connectors. Pause the video here to read through some of the connectors that you can use in your writing. Let's look at how this all works in a paragraph. Trace the concrete examples to support the abstract idea of difference that is introduced in the topic sentence. Also take note of the connectors that have been used. The twins Bahula and Valerie are surprisingly different. While Bahula spends hours on her appearance, buying clothes and makeup, Valerie is not interested in how she looks and in fact spends most of her day in shorts and a t-shirt. In addition, Bahula has many friends and loves the social life of clubbing and cocktail bars. On the other hand, Valerie is shy and very contented to lie on her bed and read her favorite novels. In conclusion, comma, take note of the fact that a comma is used after every connector 
In conclusion, it is a mystery that twins can be so dissimilar. Take a break before we move on to the importance of planning. To plan your ideas before you begin to write, it is very useful to use a mind map. This is an illustration of a mind map about how mind maps are useful. There are two paragraphs and the topic sentence for the first paragraph is mind maps help you to assemble information and there are three pieces of supporting evidence. The second paragraph, the topic sentence is mind maps help you to improve your writing and again there are three pieces of evidence to support this idea. With your planning done, you are ready to write. Mind maps are useful because they help you to assemble information. Firstly, they assist you to organize the order of ideas. Secondly, they allow you to focus on the relationship between main ideas. Thirdly, mind maps make it easier to add and delete information before you begin to write. In addition, mind maps help you to improve your writing. If you use them, it is easier to group ideas into paragraphs. Mind maps also help you to order the sentences within each paragraph. Finally, they enable you to write a clear introduction and conclusion for an essay. Let's recap. What makes a well-constructed paragraph? It has an opening topic sentence that expresses the main idea in general and abstract terms without any details. There are support sentences that give concrete details to substantiate the main idea expressed in the first sentence. It is coherent. The ideas all relate. It is cohesive. Use signposts or connectors, some repetition and synonyms to glue the sentences together. In a longer paragraph, a concluding sentence that restates the main idea outlined in the topic sentence is useful. This is an exercise for you. In groups of four or in pairs, whatever works, plan for and write a well-constructed, coherent and cohesive paragraph on one of the following topics. Autumn is a season of change. This will be your topic sentence. It can be frustrating to be dependent on public transport. Exercise is an important part of life. Smoking is dangerous. Online learning is difficult or has its advantages. You could write two paragraphs here. And the last, not all successful people have a university degree. And remember to use each of these as a topic sentence for your paragraph. This is an example of how to plan for and write the paragraph using the topic sentence, not all successful people have a university degree. In this mind map, you can see our central idea, not all successful people have a university degree. And what we have done is written three supporting pieces of evidence. We will look at Steve Jobs, at Oprah Winfrey, and at Cristiano Ronaldo. With the planning done, you are ready to write. Not all successful people have a university degree. In history, there have been many examples of successful people who have broken the rules written by society. For example, Oprah Winfrey, who has dominated the talk show industry for decades, did not complete her degree until after she began her own show. In addition, Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, also achieved great fame and wealth without having completed a degree. Finally, Cristiano Ronaldo, who is one of the most popular and wealthy football players in the world, did not attend college. Therefore, it is clear that not all successful people in history have a university degree. That all takes us to the end of this lesson. If you would like to access the full course Think Right, it is available through Teacher on the link below. In the next lesson, we will look at analyzing a poem using the paragraph method.